All right, well, I'm here at the Blister Summit with Janusz, the owner and founder of Majesty Skis. So welcome. Thank you so much for coming. I hear you were yeah. not too long ago uh, in Poland, maybe Japan a bit before that. So you've had quite a bit of travel ahead of yes. coming here. Yes, that's you know a lot of traveling this, this month, but it's like, I'm happy to be here. That's a great event, place to be. Awesome. Well, thanks for coming. And uh, yeah, it seems like you maybe took your first turns at Mount Crestabute yesterday. Yes. How was that? That was great. And looking at the snowfall right now, it's going to be even better today and tomorrow it's going to be epic. Yes, absolutely. It's going to be keep snowing. It's perfect conditions. We're lined up pretty well for the event. And so uh, thanks for being here. And I am curious, how does this type of skiing compare to Poland? I think it's pretty the same everywhere. Oh. Like, yeah, we used uh, similar products. Mm -hmm. um, and the conditions are changing, this, especially this season, uh, really fast. So I think uh, it's similar. All right. Yeah. I just would like to hear a lot more about the origin of Majesty Skis and kind of when that started, how you got it started, and how it's evolved. So Majesty started 15 years ago. Um, at that time, like the free ski and free ride market wasn't so big. And there was mostly uh, racing skis mm -hmm. uh, on slope skis. And we couldn't find product for us. So mm -hmm. um, we started building skis. We started with two models. That was Dirty Bear and Comic at the time. Uh -huh. Freestyle skis and free ride skis. And if you imagine free ride skis at that time, 99 underfoot, that was a free ride ski back yeah. then, twin tip. So yeah. from there, we started building building up the, 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 the range. We introduced also free ride and free ride touring skis mm -hmm. because um, our origins are in Tatra Mountains at the mm -hmm. south of Poland. So. Uh, infrastructure is not that big there, so we have to earn our turns and we have to, you know, tour a lot. Gotcha. But, but mountains are great and that's why we prefer to have wider skis with, um, with tech bindings because it's always good to, to ski down on a proper, proper ski. And it's, uh, it's quite similar to Norwegian market uh -huh. that was really important at the beginning for us. So in that area, like in Europe, um, we prefer to have wire skis with with tech bindings, mm -hmm. but uh, as as you know, time um, uh, went you know with uh, with uh, with the brand with uh, recognition with uh, with products that were introduced, we have uh, increased the amount of products that we have in the range. Yeah, and that's uh, right now we have like touring segment, free ride segment, free ski segment, and all mountain segment. So so we try to build up uh, skis for, for, that are proper for every, uh, let's say, region and uh, area. Pretty amazing and really awesome how you're able to recognize a pretty ga uh, wide gap in the market and then decide you're going to build something for that gap and something that really needed to be done at the time. Exactly. Yeah, I think that, that uh, the whole free ski and free ride market was sort of booming at, at that moment. Mm -hmm. And it was like really, really big in, in uh, US, also France. Yeah. Um, but as we started in Poland, at the beginning, with, with, with our concept, with our designs, we were like, people thought that we are from US. So that's mm -hmm. also a good story to tell uh, because for like five, five uh, years, we've been treated like a US origin brand uh, oh, with, with names like Dirty Bear, Lumberjack. Yeah. So, so and, and the designs were like proper for US market. Like mm -hmm. in Europe, it, the, like those kind of skis were not popular at the time. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we had to wait quite a lot yeah. to, to, to have it like, ready. And now it's grown quite a bit. You have a pretty comprehensive line and you've also obviously expanded into North America and the US. And so I think we'll talk more about that. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but in the meantime, I guess I would just be interested to hear how, I mean, things have kind of ramped up as, um, as far as like building out these different families of skis and what that looks like. Yeah, so um, as our origin are in free ride and touring, I would like to start with, with free ride uh, yeah. segment. Right now we have um, two, two different uh, ranges in that segment. That's free ride and free ride touring. Mm -hmm. Free ride skis are built with uh, T-tunnel mm -hmm. and they're like uh, proper for, let's say, regular bindings. And our free ride touring range is built on um, carbon fiber mm -hmm. so that they are like approximately, depending on the on the length, but they are approximately 100 to 120 uh, grams uh, lighter mm -hmm. than the regular uh, free ride skis, and we prefer to mount them with with tech bindings, mm -hmm. and this is like um, something that is like pretty popular. So here we have um, Havoc uh, Carbon, mm -hmm. the the one on the right, and the other one is Havoc 100. This is a new ski that we launched 
for next season. Uh -huh. um, for me, Havoc, uh, Havoc 110 is like do it all ski because yeah. it's like uh, it's so versatile. We introduced um, four by four um, radiuses here, like four mm -hmm. radiuses in side cut and four radiuses in um, rock line, mm -hmm. which makes the ski really versatile. Yep. It's like it's a, it's a like perfect free ice ski because going like going to, uh, in the mountain, you never know what you're gonna get. If it's mm -hmm. gonna be crusty, if it's gonna be powder. Um, so we have to be prepared for all kind of conditions. So we, when we build building the ski, uh, we wanted to have something that will work in all conditions. Mm -hmm. And in my opinion, like Havoc is like the perfect do it all ski. But I think that there is a, a certain demand on the market mm -hmm. for a slightly narrower ski. Yep. That's why we introduced um, Havoc 100. And it's uh, like the Havoc, uh, it's uh, in both constructions, carbon fiber and also titanol. So you can choose the weapon of your choice. Yeah, great versatility. And of course, I've spent a lot of time on the Videra TI and the Videra Carbon. Exactly. So that's the women-specific model. That's the women-specific model based on Havoc. Uh -huh. uh, there's a different, you know, flex pattern, uh, slightly, this ski is slightly lighter. So um, we build it with, with uh, women-specific in, in mind. Yeah. yeah. Um, let's just get into the construction of these. As far as the Havoc TI, what are we looking at? And uh, and what are the offerings as far as the lengths? Um, Havoc, uh, Havoc TI uh, is, is built with poplar and ash mm -hmm. plus titanol plate that is like specially 3P shaped. Uh -huh. um, so the flex distribution is really good. So the ski is not stiff. It's just, you know, dampens all the yep. unevenness of, of, you know, of snow. So it's, uh, it's uh, like... Uh, it's still light. It's not a heavy ski, mm -hmm. but it can, you know, it dampens everything. Uh, carbon fiber will be more rigid, but in terms of feeling, it's not like it's it is much stiffer. Mm -hmm. But if you if you use different kind of bindings, you have to have different kind of ski. Mm -hmm. And uh, carbon fiber skis are designed for tech bindings. So in general, tech bindings are not that rigid as uh, mm -hmm. regular alpine bindings. So. So we have to make this difference. So, but anyway, you can try them both, and and see what's better for you. Do you find people using the carbon version just to have a lighter ski in re in resort or on piste, or not necessarily? I think that the main difference is like what you want to get from your skis, mm -hmm. and uh, carbon fiber gives you that pop and gives you like rebound, yeah. uh, like immediate rebound. So uh, those skis ski differently. It's like if we compare them to bicycles, uh, mm -hmm. the carbon frame, you can feel everything like every small, you know, uh, rock or, or yeah. even like every unevenness of terrain um, skiing on the riding or on that kind of bike. But here is like the, the, the flex distribution is, is different. And um, in both models, when the more you push, the, the, the more it gives back. Mm -hmm. But um, titanium version is like, it's in a way slower, but powerful. And carbon is faster because of the, the special, you know, the, the, the fabric that, yeah. that's inside. So that's the difference. Yeah. And how has this line evolved? I mean, over the years, obviously, now you have a new offering with the 100. Yeah. Yes. Um, we started like with, uh, with the carbon fiber freeride skis a couple of years ago. And two years ago, we introduced Havoc mm -hmm. as a, that was a game changer uh, for us uh, because like the, all those four radiuses inside that make it uh, like completely, that, that's the difference you, you have. For example, mm -hmm. you can choose different length of the ski depending on, on what conditions you are skiing, mm -hmm. but the feeling you will have exactly the same. That's the difference between skis now and uh, skis that were built, I don't know, 10 years ago. Yeah. Um, some sizes were like completely, like we had Lumberjack 185 and 194, and at that time, they were completely different skis. So mm -hmm. um, right now we have uh, this, this um, benefit that if you choose longer version, it's still as maneuverable as mm -hmm. the shorter one, but it's just shorter. So some people take the same ski in both sizes, one for touring mm -hmm. and the other one for charging. So, yeah. so that's, that's the difference. And, and I think like the four radius side cut and four radius rock line improves the feeling that you have on skis mm -hmm. because as you can see we the construction is made the, the, the in, in a way that you can use the whole length of the ski mm -hmm. um, you can see you can spot on the market skis with um, uh, the widest point moved a little bit down mm -hmm. uh, which was quite popular 10 years ago oh yeah and uh, in this circumstances you don't use the whole length of the ski mm -hmm. of course 
people say that there's a benefit in powder that you can have uh, additional length, but uh, the fact is that it's heavier. And here, when we have like four reduces, we can we can really put the widest point mm -hmm. up to the to the tips, and uh, you can actually feel the whole length of the ski. Mm -hmm. And the benefit of four radius rocker is that the fact that um, previously there was like either elliptical rocker, mm -hmm. which was made based on ellipse, or regular rocker that was based on circle, mm -hmm. which made the rock line really like like an elf mm -hmm. boot. So right now we use four different um, circles uh -huh. to build it up. So the benefit is that um, you can actually feel the, the the snow or the or the powder mm -hmm. when you're skiing. So you can actually feel the whole length of the ski, which is like the, the best option that you can have. Yep. And then when you enter powder, it goes like the, the, the faster you go, the the, the, the deeper snow is like mm -hmm. it goes really smooth. Mm -hmm. So you don't have like the zero one option. It's it's really smooth. So that's the that's the evolution of the ski, and I'm really stoked to see the next years. But yeah. I think this construction is something that that we need to uh, we need to keep up because it's like ski like a dream. So yeah, you have to test it. Like right. yeah, <laughs> I'm sure there will be a lot of people out this week on them. Yeah. And I know when I was on the Videra TI a bunch earlier this season, it was interesting to feel both how locked in and stable it yeah. can feel, as well as very quick and maneuverable, especially in tight terrain, which we have a whole lot of here yeah. at Crescent did, did you feel this like that you, that you can squeeze the turn in a way mm. that that if you go, for example, uh, if you want to slow, you don't have to drift. Uh -huh. You just start to, to turn and you squeeze, squeeze that turn and you still have the, the, the contact and uh, edge grip. So yeah. I think that's that's great. Yeah, it feels a bit more precise. Yeah. And so, yeah, it'll be interesting to test the 100 now as well, because realistically, most of the time we have pretty firm conditions here. Yeah. So having that versatility for when things aren't as soft, it's yeah. great. And this is like all terrain. And we call it like free ride all mountain ski mm -hmm. because it's not like classic all mountain ski. It's, it's still a free ride ski, but with this all mountain attitude. Mm -hmm. And uh, where are these skis being built, and what does the factory look like on the Majesty side? Uh, we have a factory at the uh, at the south of Poland. Uh -huh. So uh, we've been building skis uh, there from day one. So uh, they've previously been building um, snowboards, and we kind of. Um, integrated ski constructions there. So the first year was just about, you know, prototyping and testing and, uh, you know, building some new constructions. And um, if, if I go back in time, it's like we started with uh, full carbon touring skis back in the days. And I remember one ISPO, that, that's trade show yeah. in, in Munich, when we presented um, that, that that ski was called Werewolf, oh. and it was 92 underfoot, mm -hmm. full carbon ski with a big rocker at the tips, and it was like free touring ski. Uh -huh. And I remember opinions that, you know, free, uh, like the carbon fiber touring ski with rocker, that will never happen in this market. So look at where we are now. Yeah. So every, you know, every manufacturer is doing that. Yeah. But as a small brand, we have the possibility to make really bold um, ideas and mm -hmm. to be in the avant-garde of, of uh, construction skis. So that, that helps to introduce some products. Maybe yeah. we're a bit too early, yeah. but at the same time, we, we can introduce new ideas. Yeah, and just to maintain that autonomy and really know exactly that you believe in what you're designing. Yeah, sometimes we go, we go so far that we have to, you know, we see that the product is it's like, it's gonna be hot in five years. Yeah. So we have to go back a little bit, yeah. you know, rework it. But at, at the moment we are trying to, you know, all, to put all those crazy ideas into shape that mm -hmm. is acceptable in mm -hmm. a way. And, to, and because there are a lot of crazy uh, shapes on the market, but uh, I think that versatility is something that is like the key here mm -hmm. right now. So, so we put like all those like, special knowledge that we have and all those ideas that we developed through the years to, to shapes that uh, look like regular skis, mm -hmm. but there's a real, there's a spice inside. Yeah, there's a lot so more going on. <laughs> you need to test them because, uh, you know, you don't see like four radiuses here inside mm -hmm. that you don't see that four radiuses in rocker. They, they look similar, but mm -hmm. they actually you can feel the difference when, when, ski, when skiing and testing yeah. the product. All right, well, now we are here with your free ski lineup. So let's just get into that a bit. Um, I think first speak to some of the constructional differences or maybe how the ski would vary quite a bit from the skis we were just talking about. 
okay, like free ski range is, is coming back to the roots. Mm -hmm. um, but th in this range, we use some ideas from, from our free ride collection. So basically free ski models like the Dirty Bear XL and Vandal, they are built with poplar and ash and fiberglass. It's a very classic construction. Mm -hmm. uh, what we introduced here is like four radius side cut in Vandal and uh, in Dirty Bear XL, we introduced four radius side cut and also rock line. In general, we call it free ski, but it's like mostly freestyle. Mm -hmm. And um, as you are able to test them, you will see the difference because Vandal is like freestyle ski, but still all mountain, like the mm -hmm. um, spice, uh, all mountain spice. And Dirty Bear is actually freestyle ski that, that can be treated as freestyle free ride, so mm -hmm. backcountry freestyle. And um, saying so, I would like to underline that we have this idea of versatile skis, and uh, the whole idea of skiing redefined is to bring the product that will meet expectations, mm -hmm. so that you, you don't have to have a bunch of different products in your quiver. Of course, sometimes you need, because you, if you want to do, do touring, the freestyle, you have to have different products. Yeah. But at the end of the day, you really, if you focus on something, you have to have versatile ski. And mm -hmm. that's that's what we have here. There you go. And this is the entire lineup? or is um, in, in the lineup, we have five models. Mm -hmm. That's Dirty Bear Pro, which is like a, like a park and pipe ski um, that we developed with Japanese uh, freestyle, freestyle team. Awesome. And uh, we've got uh, Vesper, which is like woman-specific ski. Then we have Vandal, like the do-it-all freestyle ski, mm -hmm. and actually this is like the best seller in our range. Um, then we have Dirty Bear XL and uh, Vestal, which is like, again, woman-specific ski. And uh, Vestal is a lot like the Dirty Bear? Or it's... it's like Dirty Bear, but with uh, with a different flex pattern. Uh -huh. And that's the only difference. Also, the top sheet is, is a different color. Awesome, yeah. We love the top sheets. They look great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So now on to the touring family of skis. I know that's another uh, focal point for Majesty and that you have quite a bit of offerings in the touring realm. So let's get into it. Exactly. Our offer for of touring skis is quite range. We've got uh, three models in fiberglass and four models in uh, carbon fiber. Mm -hmm. um, the main difference between uh, fiberglass and carbon is like the, the, the dampness like and uh, the fact that carbon skis are lighter. Mm -hmm like approximately 100, 120 grams, depending on the length and model. Uh, but in general, they are like more, more precise, more rigid, and um, the fiberglass ones um, are more, in a way, forgiving. Mm -hmm. And uh, you feel, uh, I don't want to say that you feel more comfortable on them, but they are like easy going More skis. accessible. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the word. So um, the collection is quite is is, uh, is wide, and we have uh, all types of skis. We've got fast and light ski, mm -hmm. which is like Super Scout. We've got Do It All Touring Ski, which is Super Wolf, mm -hmm. that you already know that has been reviewed. Yep. And uh, then we have Super Patrol, which is like more precise ski with cut of tail technology. Mm -hmm. um, we designed the ski for patrollers and mountain rescue guys. So everybody can find something for, for themselves. And, and uh, I think that the, the good thing is that we, when we build skis, we have this like end consumer and in mind. So, mm -hmm. so we, we actually provide the product that is not only, I don't know, 85, 90, 95 millimeter waist, but we also think about you know, different types of performance mm -hmm. that, that, you, that you really need. And uh, speaking about Superwolf, it's a ski that uh, you can take it anywhere, and even if you're tired and you want to have mellow, mellow uh, run down uh, when you're like really tired after a long tour, mm -hmm. it takes you safe home. So, and if you want to have like more powerful ski, mm -hmm. more precise, direct, that's going to be super patrol. Mm -hmm. So, you need to test them, of course. Yeah. But uh, but at the end of the day, everybody will find something for them. And then, talking about carbon fiber range. We've got Super Scout Carbon, Super Wolf Carbon, Super Patrol Carbon, mm -hmm. and Super Nova Carbon, mm -hmm. which is the ski that uh, is the widest in collection, and it's sort of a connection between touring and freeride, mm -hmm. because this is like still a touring ski mm -hmm. with freeride capi capabilities. Yeah. It's, um, um, How wide is it? It's depending on the length, but mm -hmm. it's like 103 or 105. Okay. Uh, so. Uh, this is a ski that was chosen by patrollers and guides. Mm -hmm. 
because um, they wanted to have ski that is easy to climb up, but uh, on the way down it still acts like a free ride ski. Mm -hmm. uh, it's made only in carbon fiber to have this the lightness, and uh, it's pretty much awarded ski in Europe. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was the beginning of our redefined collection, like of, on, of touring skis, because uh, this supernova has cut off tail, which means the stance is more to the back. Mm -hmm. So uh, you have more more tips uh, with with big rocker for those like uh, good runs, mm -hmm. and uh, it's easy to to go up with with uh, with this construction. Uh, also, you can you can choose the shorter ski that you would normally pick because uh, uh, one eighty five will act like one ninety because of mm -hmm. the cut of tail. Mm -hmm. So the benefit is not only because it's made with carbon fiber ski, uh, carbon, carbon fiber and Paulownia uh, wood core, mm -hmm. but also that is like shorter, but the, uh, the whole technique and, and uh, um, the whole, you know, performance is the same as you would have a longer ski, which is a huge benefit. Yeah, excellent. And so, uh, you know, these skis are a little bit more niche and specific to the touring world. If someone's looking for a bit more of that 50-50 or sort of crossover ski, I mean, they have a lot of options in this family. But then, of course, there is like the Havoc Carbon that we talked about as well. Yes, but that's the different approach. Like here we have touring mm -hmm. with, with like like I said, Supernova has this like free ride capabilities. Mm -hmm. But Havoc is going to be like free ride ski with touring yeah. uh, abilities. So so it's a different consumer. Mm -hmm. And some of, the, some of the people that do touring, they would never choose free ride ski with tech binding yeah. and, and, you know, and the opposite. So, uh, so we've got products for everybody, I mm -hmm. guess. And uh, the difference between touring is the fact that we have, all those skis have one radius side cut. Okay. So they are like precise tools for different touring category. Yeah. So in this case, we have, uh, if somebody wants to have fast and light ski, he will go for Super Scout. Yep. And then as an addition, he will go for Supernova Carbon to have like the widest, yeah. wider ski for those days, like with powder. And this is still touring. Mm -hmm. um, with uh, with uh, free ride segment, we have this idea to have one pair for everything. So there we have four radiuses, which is like ski that does it all. Mm -hmm. um, but it's a different concept. I'm not saying this is better. This is right. yeah. different, this consumer. Is a different consumer, different concept. Yep. So if you want, if you're focused on skiing down, and that's the that's the main, you know, criteria for you. I think free ride uh, touring is is something that you should choose. Yep. But then again, touring is, is is market is huge. That's why we have to have, you know, different different approach for different customers. Yeah, whether it's you're rounding out a quiver of multiple touring skis, or you need the one tool that will do a lot of different exactly, things. Exactly, exactly. And uh, just to clarify, how narrow is the Super Scout? Super Scout is 85 on okay. the foot. Yeah. Yeah, so that's going to be a quick light ski for people really exactly prioritizing exactly. uphill. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, it's great to see, I mean, all the versatility and to get a bit of distinction on the differences among the lineup. So, um, yeah, pretty impressive that you are building all of these skis with both the fiberglass and the carbon and maybe the differences that are offered there can really cater to a lot of different yeah. consumers. And the construction is one thing, but also like the the the... the, the the, the other, like when you look at the ski from the side, like the rock line and camber line, it's also very important because, mm -hmm. for example, Super Scout doesn't have like big rocker, it's mm -hmm. a really small rocker, so you can choose shorter ski and have really good grip. When Super Wolf has a slightly bigger uh, rocker at the tips mm -hmm. and slightly arched tails to be really like fluid, mm -hmm. um, so there are differences that really differentiate the product. So yep. those small things really matter. And we try to be as specific as it gets yep. to give you the best product. Well, it's really amazing to hear about your origins in Poland and all that you did to kind of build what was needed at the time. But of course, the brand has expanded a whole lot since then. And so I would love to hear a bit more about the North America expansion. And so we're going to be bringing in someone else to talk about that. Do you mind introducing him? Exactly. Andrew. Andrew is going to represent Majesty America here. Uh -huh. So it's like I'm really happy that we are able to present our products in the US and Canada. And uh, I think we have the right product for this you know, area. So. All right, let's bring him yeah, in. Let's bring him in. All right, well, now I'm here with Andrew Mosley. He is the head of Majesty Skis America. And so it's been really interesting to see Majesty really expand into this North American market. And I would love to hear you speak about that as far as 
how that timeline has looked and where you're at today. Sure. So I think, uh, you know, obviously I, I would love to say just a little bit about how I got into Please. this and how I started. So this is kind of a funny story because um, I was sitting on a beach in Maui <laughs> thinking about what I'm going to do next. And, uh, and uh, randomly, I saw this article in a Polish business magazine mm -hmm. on my phone about uh, Janusz and the company that he started in Poland. And the article was talking about how this brand from Poland is actually known outside of its own home country in Europe, much, much more than it's at its home country. And so I started exploring this and researching it. And I'm like, you know what, because I'm, I was born in Poland, so I'm also Polish, but I've been living in the US since the mid nineties. And um, my passion has always been to bring something from my birth country, I guess, to the US and show it that we can also do something that's world class. Mm -hmm. So I kind of reached out to Janusz and uh, sitting on, on, the, on the beach in Maui, I uh, started writing a business plan and proposal to him and just kind of reached out to him and we started talking. Mm -hmm. And the more we started talking about it, uh, I loved the brand as he was uh, speaking earlier about that people actually thought it was an American brand. Mm -hmm. And that's why I was so drawn to it because I'm like, okay, I've been living here for so long. And yes, it sounds so awesome, like the product names, the branding, the message, the, you know, what, what it represents. Uh, there's some, uh, you know, a good story about environmental sustainability in a brand with skis for trees, mm -hmm. the planting, uh, planting a tree for every ski we sell. And I was very, very, very drawn to it. So the more we talked about it, you know, we decided to like, you know, let's, let's, let's explore more. And it kind of went from there. I went to Poland, visited um, a few times. We, uh, you know, we talked through different options and 2016, 2017 season was kind of like, Let's see what happens. Let's let's see how this brand will get received. And mm -hmm. we we brought some models in for for ski tests um, and uh, uh, for for buyer's guide tests with free skier at the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, it just kind of went from there and grew from there. So that's kind of like the you know where it started, I guess, yeah. in the U.S. What yeah. an interesting origin point, and to you know feel like there was some American like branding there, but also to be like, well, let's actually educate people about a ski company from Poland and right. bring it into the fold. So right. that's pretty fascinating. Yeah. So, and over, you know, and over the years, obviously the collection has changed mm -hmm. uh, as, as we have been um, offering uh, skis online. And uh, my goal is obviously to expand it into ski shops and specialty ski shops. And we have done um, a lot in the last three years, mm -hmm. um, a lot of uh, presence in, and especially in, in, in the Rockies. So mm -hmm. Colorado, Utah, and also in British Columbia and in Alberta. Mm -hmm. uh, I am based in Seattle, so we our next step is to kind of expand it into my home ground, yeah. uh, especially with the touring uh, terrain that we have up there with the volcano, uh, you know, skiing and all the way through the summer. Yeah, uh, that's kind of the next natural step to actually uh, put our product in shops there. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, and so, you know, here we are, and uh, obviously I've reached out, I think, to Jonathan a while back, and that's kind of how we got introduced to Blister a yeah. few years back, and I think we sent you uh, one product to test, and uh, year after year, and you tested the Super Wolf. Mm -hmm. um, I think Luke was very um, positive about that product, and now we have a new collection that we introduced with Free Ride that Janusz, Janusz was talking about, yeah. and we expanded the, uh, the Free Ski. Uh, line. So yeah, it's been very exciting. Yeah, it's been really interesting. I mean, from our perspective too, I know Paul Forward, our reviewer in Alaska, spent a lot of time on the Havoc. That's right. I now have a lot of time on yeah. the Videra. And uh, yeah, so it's been great for us to kind of, you know, get more acquainted with the products and spend more time. Um, but I'm also curious, I mean, aside from the retailers and reviewers, mm -hmm. what does it look like to maybe grow a network of athletes and sure. ambassadors? Yeah. So, you know, to be a completely unknown brand in a market like the U.S., it's like to be like a drop in the ocean. Yeah. Like, who are you and who is Majesty? <laughs> so we have been from the beginning uh, working with um, up and coming athletes, um, someone who is much more visible, uh, mm -hmm. less maybe competitive, not, mm -hmm. not a caliber of an athlete that would go to a X Games, for example, but someone who is super stoked on the product and they're really excited to show it. Uh, you know, we've had a, a few freestylers that had, you know, thousands and followers on Instagram. So we've been using social media a lot to uh, to kind of catch the, the consumer's eye of what this brand is and who is Majesty. And obviously, more you see it also in magazines and, and brochures and online and reviews. Uh, we have started to uh, work with more athletes in the touring and free ride mm -hmm. categories, especially in uh, British Columbia and in Alberta and, and Canada, but also in Jackson Hole, because like some of our products, like the, the Vanguard, which is 118 underfoot, uh, playful twin free ride ski, 
uh, as well as the havoc. It's like uh, the Jackson conditions are just perfect for that. Mm -hmm. So we have several uh, pro skiers out there. And we're also working with professional tour guides, you know, guys that will go up there and, and, and guide people through the backcountry. And, you know, they will take trips to Antarctica. And so we, we like to be very connected to the end user yeah. and just kind of tell them, look, this is how you use our product. And these are the professionals who use it every day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah, and you have, like, we've just gone over quite a bit of offerings for a lot of different people out there. Right, yeah. Um, well, it's awesome. It's great to hear your story. Definitely yeah. an interesting point of origin as far as how you came to be uh, the head of Majesty <laughs> Skis North America. Yeah. And so thanks for sharing that. And Thank yeah, you so much. For, it's great to be here. Thanks for being here. Thanks. Thanks.